Hey YouTube, it's Brother Mark here. I hope you're well and good. It is Wednesday morning here in the UK and uh, I wanted to talk about a comment that was left um, on one of my videos over the last, I think, few days, but I've ended up having to block the person that was commenting um, because they were proposing something which is plainly a heresy and has been known to be a heresy for, for some considerable time. And it's the doctrine of God as the devil and I'll put a link here on the there's a Wikipedia article which will cover some of this as well but you know I did want to touch on this briefly because this particular person I have no personal issues with them but I do with this particular teaching of course um, and the way that it was being proposed was as a almost like a revelation hey look what I found what I've discovered um, but this is nothing new and uh, this has been a heresy for at least the last couple, well, basically the last 2,000 years, um, when we're going to look at some of the references in here, you'll see that, that was, uh, this has been a known doctrine for some time. This isn't something new. This isn't something um, someone's just randomly discovered. And, and what you find within Bible-believing Protestant, we use that term for now, Christianity, that all of these particular interpretations, whatever they might be, have become known, have become refuted. And there's an accepted standard doctrine that runs from, you know, beginning to end of the Bible that has, you know, come to be known and understood by the great majority of Bible-believing Christians. Now, of course, there's different areas and different interpretations, but they can be pretty easily refuted. So, for example, the post-tribulation uh, doctrine. Um, there's a reasonable amount of people that believe that to be true, but they're still in the minority. So, you know, the, the standard doctrine that, that, that we know as Christians um, has largely been untouched uh, since the, the release of Scripture over time. And, uh, you know, when you, when you start looking at things like this, I mean, this person was, was particularly insistent that I have to spend time refuting this. It's almost like, well, I can't answer it, therefore you know, that person must be right. And it doesn't work like that. If we spend our time as Christians refuting every single heresy, I mean, the post-trib doctrine has been refuted um, easily and, and by people far, far more eloquent than I am to actually to do that. But it's been done. So to constantly go over the same things just to appease people when they're known to be heresy, when it's um, blatantly obvious that they're heresy, um, is just frankly a waste of time and it, it always surprises me when people are uh, you know trying to, to push that and then the, the insistence is on you to disprove what they're saying um, and you know even more surprising when it's been disproved um, for millennia um, so on the article that I sent um, essentially what, what it's saying here although this is not exactly 100% accurate it says here on the first line in Christian um, Heresiology, which is the study of heresy, I've never heard of that, but whatever. There have been historical claims that certain Christian sects worship the devil. This was especially an issue in relation in, in the reaction of the early church to Gnosticism and its dualism, where the creator deity is understood as a demiurge inferior to the actual transcendent God. And, and essentially what this person was saying to me was, hey, I've discovered, you know, some of these really interesting verses and things here, which suggest that actually the Old Testament um, um, mentions of, of God or the Lord are in fact relating to the devil. And, and it's ridiculous. I mean, when you read through the Old Testament, I don't ever get that sense that actually, hang on a second, I'm reading about Satan here. The problem that people have, and, and actually the highlighted section here is in 1 Chronicles 21, but you can't base a doctrine on a single verse. This is exactly what the Catholic Church does. They, they take a single verse and go, see, this is, this is what it's, it's all about. You cannot do this with scripture with regards to any doctrine. And, you know, when you read through the Old Testament, and let, let's be honest here, it is a hard read. And there are some sections of that that are not easy for us to read, because I think in some respects where we are now as Christians, we, we, we're kind of molly coddled a little bit. We're, we're kind of babied a bit and we don't understand or appreciate or respect that the Lord has not changed. 
the way that he deals with us has changed. So, um, you know, we, we have before the law, we have during the law, and then we have perhaps what we call, you know, the age of grace, I guess you, you could call it. Um, and the law itself was a schoolmaster to bring us. So we, we had these different approaches, but the Lord has never, ever changed. Um, if I bring up uh, Malachi 3.6, for I am the Lord, I change not. Um, and to read the rest of the verse to do it justice, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. But I am the Lord, I change not. He has never changed. And whether we find something palatable to read in the past is irrelevant to how we we feel about the current and the present. You know, and this is the problem we've got nowadays when you've got all of this cancel culture and um, revisionist attempts to change history just because it's not nice to read about. When you read about the slave trade or, um, you know, the brutality of war, I don't know, in a few centuries ago or whatever it was, and you read about it and go, oh, I don't like that, and you want to change it or romanticise it, you know, or eradicate it altogether. You know, the Old Testament, you have to read that and understand, well, okay, times were, were a bit different in some respects, but the Lord has never changed. And whether we like what we read or not is relevant. And, you know, we also need to understand here, you know, that in, in reference to him not changing, let, let's look at a verse here, a couple of verses here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but uh, we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your con consciences. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, this is exactly why we evangelize and why we try to, you know, persuade people to get saved, because we know what awaits the unsaved person, and we know how literally terrifying that is, how terrifying hell is. Hell is not a cool place where everybody is partying or whatever. It is a terrible, terrible place that we don't want anybody to ever go to. You know, so we, we know that. And that's a key word, terror, in the New Testament. You skip back to Job chapter 31. And this was before the law as well and, and recognised as one of the oldest books in the Bible. Reads in, in verse 23 of chapter 31. For destruction from God was a terror to me and by reason of his highness I could not endure. In Genesis 31 we hear of the terror of God upon the cities around the sons of Jacob. The Lord has not changed and whether we find reading the Old Testament to be palatable or not is irrelevant and you have to read it and understand and in some respects we are greatly blessed in this day and age that we're not under the law, that we don't experience a lot of those things that um, people have experienced when you read further back in, in you know in time in the scriptures we are we're quite quite blessed at the moment and we're still escaping what's going to happen um, during the time of Jacob's trouble and, and what happens to the saints in that time we're incredibly blessed brethren and I think sometimes it's hard for for, for us Christians even us bible believing Christians that that read that and go it's pretty tough to read but we can still stomach it and, and of course all the wishy-washy modern so-called christians uh, can't stand any reference to judgment or his righteous anger you know or, or how we acted in the old testament and they just brush that away and it's all love 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 we have to understand these things and accept them and reading into you know what was happening in the old testament and reading into that that that's actually satan is heresy it's not just an interpretation and it's you know it's kind of a balancing you're thinking about it, it is absolutely heresy and you know you need to reject those things out of hand and and not kind of entertain a conversation about well you know maybe you've got a point there and let's kind of discuss that it's heresy it's heresy you admonish a heretic twice then reject them but it's heresy so, you know, I exchanged some comments with this person and, and they were absolutely insistent and they're saying, well, I just don't understand why you don't get what I'm saying. It's not that I don't get what you're saying, it's heresy. So there's a fundamental difference to the way that you're going to interact with someone. It's like if I was talking to a, a post-trib or I was talking to a, a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon. 
you know, if they're pushing something to me, I'm not going to sit there and, and have that exchange and kind of, you know, think about it a little bit. Not at all. It's heresy, absolute heresy. And you, you become assured of these things. How? By reading the scriptures. You know, developing that confidence and assurance of what you're reading. And that's made even easier by the King James Bible, because as, as some of you may or may not know, I'm a King James Bible only uh, preacher and, and teacher. I don't accept any of the other versions. And that gives you the additional strength because, you know, the words are true and tested and pure and inerrant and you can count on them. And that gives you much, much better strength to deal with things like this. But, you know, read through the scriptures and you see it. Read it from end to end. Start with the difficult things. You know, that's that's the whole point. You end up in the Old Testament first when you begin your read through and accept what you read. Even the things that you find hard to read are there for you to understand, to, to get this, especially the character of the Lord who has never, ever changed. And, you know, we take a dim view, for example, nowadays in the modern era of sin, but his view has never changed at all. And you can read through the Old Testament and see how he responds to it. And this is why we as Christians, we understand that there's a terror and we take things incredibly lightly nowadays. And I'm just as guilty as anybody of that. But when I read through the Old Testament, when I come across a doctrine like this, I know that he's not changed. And I know he is who he is. I am who I am, he says. And he has not changed. And he's not going to say something like that in Malachi and then you're finding that there's this massive shift in change. The way he deals with us has changed, um, you know, and uh, it's just it's staggering that, that we live in this time now where it, it's arguably the easiest time, um, especially to get saved. But, you know, going back again, knowing the terror is the key word, knowing the terror of the Lord. You know, not the, you know, the, the kind of slightly miffed attitude, the terror of the Lord. And you see this in the Old Testament, you see it in the New Testament. And this is the urgency of evangelism, you know, and this is how serious doctrine is as well, brethren. You know, stand strong in, in, in what you know to be true. Uh, don't entertain heresy. You know, as the scripture says in Titus, you know, admonish them twice and then reject them. You know, you don't have to answer claims because... They're absurd, frankly. And, you know, as you'll see on the article, I'll link the article here as well. You'll see that Tertullian, um, the first major heretic of Christianity, and I'm not surprised, was also talking about this kind of thing. Um, and you'll see these examples um, going on in here. Uh, it's not what I would call a perfect article, but it at least gives you a primer as to what some people have been saying. So if you do come across this, you need to understand this is total heresy. It's not just a kind of an exchange of ideas or, you know, something to consider. It is absolute heresy. So I did want to share that. I, I mean, I'd never actually heard of this, brethren. When I came across this and this person started sending me this stuff, um, I was thinking, what the what on earth is this? Right. You know, and it, it sounded so foreign to me and no surprise, of course. But I actually had to go and look it up to see if it had been taught by anybody or whether this person had just kind of come up with it themselves. But this is not a new heresy. This is something that has been around for some time. Um, and, and in reality, you know, the issue is when, when you look at the, the section here about ancient Christianity, if you read the, the final paragraph here, this is the problem that people had in, in, in the way that God dealt with people back then what he did, how he acted, and that's what they have a problem with. They want the Lord to be just lovey-dovey, you know, this old uh, man with a white beard sitting in a cloud being lovely and nice to everybody. That is not the character of the Lord. Um, but, you know, you can, you can see why people have ended up down that, that road. And this is the danger of private interpretation. And it's not that we have to have this massive corporate agreement, but you've got to be so careful what you read into scripture because the danger of falling into heresies like this is, is always there. And you've got to be so careful. So, you know, be, be sure what you're reading, be careful how you read. And if you feel like you're going down this road and you're not sure, do some research check occasionally there'll be a youtuber or you know a book or something potentially 
that can help just steer your way a little bit. But, you know, the general, as I said at the beginning of this video, this general consensus of, of what constitutes Bible-believing Christianity follows a, a standard doctrine. And, you know, some people deviate on, on definitions of words. We see that here in YouTube quite a bit. But doctrine is generally you know, a, um, a constant from what I've seen anyway. And this is why sometimes I find all the arguments and stuff about words and then people basically pointing at each other and saying, well, you're not saved because you believe this definition and that definition. That's absurd, you know, but doctrine, it's a different story. So, you know, believing in this doctrine, brethren, doesn't mean you're unsaved, by the way. This is a classic example of reading something and just getting it horribly wrong. And again, you know, this is this is an important point to make that you, you, you have to be careful when you come across somebody that's fallen for something like this to automatically judge them as unsaved. You know, this, this poor fellow who's, who's kind of fallen for this, I don't know how he how he did so. But just because he believes this or, or is going down this road doesn't mean he's unsaved. It just means he's immature in the scriptures and just needs somebody to just potentially bounce him back the right way. And I was trying to nudge his... In, in as friendly way as I possibly could but of course you have to be firm and then that's taken as rudeness and, and in my case I was called a narcissist for, for even saying this and I just there are some people you can't help very much but you should respond in a firm but friendly way and say look this is just wrong you're going down the wrong road you need to come back you need to rethink what you're doing here and you know but but as I've experienced before and I'm sure many of you have uh, the response is typically negative. It's very rare that I come across uh, a Christian or somebody looking at um, doctrine and scriptures that is willing to be um, admonished, to receive that admonishment. So I ended up having to reject this person and just block them from the channel. Um, they may be watching this. I have no idea. If you are watching this, please reconsider this doctrine. Please reconsider the road that you're going down. And... Um, just just rethink where you are with this because it is not good for you so that's all i can really say but i'd be intrigued if anybody you know is watching this video and you get to the end of this uh, thing if you can comment or i don't know send me an email if you like but, but comment here let me know if you've heard of this doctrine because i had not up until i think uh, like a few days ago a week ago whenever i first started hearing from this person I'd never heard about it at all, but maybe you guys have. Um, I'd be really intrigued to, to know your thoughts on it. But um, for me, categorically, it's a heresy. It's a major, major problem. Um, it needs to be uh, reproved and rebuked. Um, but I'd be really intrigued to hear if any of you have come across it before and what you think. Um, yeah, interesting stuff, right? So uh, that's it, really. So if you want to leave a comment, please do so. You can drop me an email also, biblebelieveruk.gmail.com. Um, looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much.